The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. As they traveled toward, toward Jerusalem, Jesus' disciples must have felt the anticipation rising. They had witnessed miracles, heard his teachings, and sensed that something pivotal was about to happen. Yet despite all they had seen, they still struggled to grasp what following Jesus truly meant. This week's Gospel reading from Mark chapter 10 reminds us that the path of discipleship is not what we might expect. It echoes an earlier moment in Mark chapter 8 when Jesus first revealed to his disciples that his journey would lead to suffering, death, and resurrection. Peter, shocked, tried to correct him, but Jesus rebuked him sharply reminding Peter and us that following him isn't about avoiding suffering or seeking glory, but about embracing our cross. Fast forward to today's message, and we see James and John still grasp, grappling with uh, Jesus' message. They ask for positions of status and power, imagining a kingdom that looks more like the world's kingdoms than the one Jesus was truly ushering in. But Jesus corrects them once again, revealing that following him is about service, not status, sacrifice, not personal gain. Now the disciples are just like us. They were looking for change, change in their world and undoubtedly in ch change in themselves. They had given up their lives as common folk doing common work left behind family and security, and followed a teacher they believed would lead them to something better. They imagined a Messiah who would overthrow the oppressive powers of their day, a leader who would restore their nation and usher in a new era of freedom, peace, and prosperity. But the path Jesus was leading them on was hard to understand. It didn't follow the route of power, might, or worldly success. Instead, it was a path of self-sacrifice, service, and humility, a path that runs directly counter to the way the world often works. We can see ourselves in their struggles. Today, we too are looking for a way to change our world. We face challenges that sometimes feel overwhelming. Our politics, both internationally and nationally, are becoming more polarized and adversarial. Economic inequality continues to grow, leaving many behind while few prosper. Meanwhile, we grapple with crises like environmental disasters and health emergencies that threaten the future of our planet. Like the disciples, we long for change. We want a better world where justice prevails and people thrive. We can sympathize with the disciples' desire for a new kingdom, especially given their backgrounds as poor fishermen and the like. They wanted their lot in life to improve. And just as they struggled to understand Jesus' vision of change, so do we. In our world, change often seems to come through earthly power, through political might, financial strength, or strategic influence. And we are used to the idea that those with earthly power and wealth shape the future. But Jesus is inviting us to something different. Just as he called James and John away from the pursuit of status, he calls us away from the world's reliance on power, wealth, and domination. Jesus leads us towards a different kind of change, one rooted in service, humility, and love. 
It's important to recognize that the longing for change is not wrong. It's deeply human. James and John weren't misguided in wanting a better world, and neither are we. The desire for transformation, for healing, for justice is not only understandable, but good. Jesus didn't rebuke their desire for change. He simply redirected it. He showed them and us that the change we seek often comes in ways we don't expect. We, too, are invited to rethink how we pursue change. Instead of looking only to large, sweeping transformation, Jesus invites us to start small, to change how we live and interact with others each day. What small, personal changes can we make that align with Jesus' call to serve? Maybe it's practicing humility in our conversations, choosing kindness where there is division, or being more generous with our time and resources. Perhaps it's choosing to listen more closely to those who are suffering, or standing up for those without voice. Each small act of service reflects the kind of transformation Jesus calls us to. It's natural to feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of the problems we face, political polarization, economic inequality, environmental crises. We want to see change on a grand scale, but the enormity of these challenges can leave us feeling powerless. But here's the good news. The kind of change Jesus calls us to begins with us. The personal changes we make, how we live, how we interact with others, how we respond to the world around us, those things are not insignificant. In fact, they are the building blocks for larger societal transformation. When we choose humility over pride, service over self-interest, and generosity over hoarding, we contribute to a culture that values people over power. When we embody Jesus' love in our everyday actions, we become living examples of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where justice, compassion, and peace are prioritized over domination and division. Imagine if each one of us made small, faithful changes that align with Jesus' way in our lives. Over time, these small choices add up, creating communities grounded in love and justice. And when communities change, so do the systems and structures that govern our world. Think of the movements that have happened in the past for civil rights, environmental justice, or economic reform throughout history. These movements began with individuals willing to live out their values, even in small ways. Like Jesus and those first followers, they trusted that their actions, multiplied by others, could lead to real, lasting change. So as we follow Jesus, choosing to serve, to love, and to stand up for what is right, we contribute to the larger transformation our world so desperately needs. Our personal choices can influence the political, economic, and environmental systems around us, not by overpowering them, but by reshaping them through the quiet, steady force of love. Real change, the kind of change that Jesus envisions, doesn't come from power or prestige, but from the simple, everyday ways we follow him through love, humility, and service. Thanks be to God. Amen. I would now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. Growing in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's merciful compassion as we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of mercy, you are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people with the unceasing grace you extend to us. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, 
and our Metropolitan and Acting Primate, Christopher, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In the Diocese of Huron, we pray for the gathering of Synod that has happened this weekend. And we pray for the parishes in the London Deanery, for their clergy and people. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by or undergoing ecological disaster and devastation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Move the hearts of all world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and to care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, hear our prayer. We thank you for your presence as you walk with us th through challenges of joblessness, rising costs of daily living, homelessness, grief, and sickness. We pray for the sick and those in need of prayer. In our own parish this week, we pray especially for Sheldon, Bill, Kath, Lindsay, Brendan, and Hudson, Marion, Stella, Jenny, Kaylee, Janice, Andrew, John, Doreen, Mary, and Mary Rose. We pray for those experiencing ongoing long-term health concerns, praying for Pat, Carol, Karen, Tracy, Brian, Alex, Vicki, Miriam, Max, Norma, Charlotte, Aubrey, Berlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Charlene, Bud, Amy, Betty, Ray, Jason, Mark, Jim, and Odile. Gather your community around all who need your healing power and help them to find strength in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this parish of St. Mark's and help us to fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Help us to always be building up ministries that support those who are isolated and lonely. And let us celebrate with others in our parish who rejoice and let us weep with those who weep. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember your saints for their strong and faithful witness, even unto death. Console grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to always pursue the courageous path of justice. Keep us faithful on earth and bring us to life everlasting with the saints of every time and place. God of grace, hear our prayer. With thankful and grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.